Good morning and welcome to you all wherever you may be as we say our prayers together today. Monday the 21st of September, which is St Matthew's Day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our reading then this morning, not surprisingly, comes from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9. As Jesus was walking alone, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat down at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now tax collectors like Matthew have a very poor reputation in the Gospel. They're numbered amongst the group of outcasts with whom no decent person would have any contact. In Palestine, most of them would have been Jews employed by the Roman colonial power to collect taxes from their own people. Roman citizens didn't have to pay taxes. Only the conquered people had to do this. So they were seen as both renegades and traitors and also of people who were in great violation of their Jewish faith in working for Gentiles in this way. Even Jesus, when speaking of members of the Christian community who refused to change their sinful ways in spite of every effort made to help them reform, said that they should be treated as a Gentile or a tax collector. The Jewish tax collector was put on the same level as a Gentile, a person, again, with whom no self-respecting Jew would have any relationship. But here in today's reading, we see Jesus inviting such a person to be his disciple. And this tells us a number of things about Jesus. It means that he doesn't look at stereotypes. He doesn't say, he's a tax collector, so he must be a very sinful person with whom I should have no contact. No, he looks at the person and sees the potential there. And in Matthew, he sees the potential for him to be one of his followers and indeed one of his apostles on whom the continuation of Jesus' mission will depend. For Jesus, our past is not very important. What counts is where we are now and where we can be in the future. After Jesus says to Matthew, follow me, the tax collector gets up and goes after Jesus, leaving all the paraphernalia of his occupation behind him, very similar to Peter, Andrew, James and John leaving their boats, their nets and even their families to go with Jesus. It's an unconditional and total following. Matthew then decides to celebrate his new calling. He invites Jesus and his disciples and also the only friends he has other sinners and tax collectors. They all sit down together in his house. We see Jesus and his disciples unhesitatingly going into the house of a sinner and accepting his responsibility, his hospitality. Of course, the Pharisees are scandalised. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? As devout followers of the law, they would never have contact with such people. How can Jesus, as a rabbi, behave like this? Jesus answered them very bluntly. Those who are well do not need a doctor. Only the sick do. Matthew and his friends are people in need of healing. Jesus is there to give it to them. And he quotes from the prophet Hosea. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. Jesus and his true followers are measured by their compassion and care of those in real need. They're not measured by their observation of ritual laws. In fact, says Jesus, he has come with a special interest in the sinner. 
genuinely good people don't really need the services of Jesus. They are the sheep who stay with the flock and close to the shepherd. Jesus is interested in the stray sheep. That's me. What about you? Let us pray. For the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighbours may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. And as we gather together all our concerns and all our thoughts and all our prayers, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God as we join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you, all those you love, and all those for whom you pray, this day and for evermore. Amen. Now stay safe, and God bless.